This conference will now be recorded. Hi Ram, we are not getting your voice. Ram, we are not able to hear your voice. You can able to hear my voice. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Now we have uh, EMP HYD dot EMP text file, and I have another files as well. Few files EMP two dot text files. Similarly, in Bangalore container also I have a EMP one dot text files and emp2 dot uh, text files so this is how in azure azure storage account we have two different containers and each container contains a data with the emp1 dot text emp2 dot text and these files inside the different containers but both schemas are changed data is different so this data we want to load into this data we want to load into sql database table so i have a sql server table over here inside the sql server i have a table inside the table we are going to keep this employee number employee name salary okay so this is the data i have now what i'm going to do by using this azure data factory we want to so how to implement this scenario to implement this scenario to implement this scenario we are going to use this storage account sql database let's create these two go to the storage account first e classes storage
click on containers e classes file so here i'm going to create two containers sorry two different containers i want to create go to storage account level create a container emp hyd container this is one container and another container emp bangalore container so i have two containers bangalore and hyderabad i'm going to load the files into this container so all the people from the hyderabad hr will be loaded their data into this container and again same from the bangalore uh, department uh, sorry so from the hyderabad department also they are going to upload the files into this container but ultimately we want to load the data we want to load the data into one file only okay so how to load this data into sql database let's check the sql database as well sql databases into this target database i'm going to load this data so now we can go to azure data factory so we have created one uh, azure data factory yesterday let's refresh this one So you need to create a limited services first. So simply go to manage. Already for Azure SQL database, I hope we have a limited service created yesterday. Click on manage. What happened? under the manage yesterday we created these linked services but i don't want to use this only i want to create a blob storage click on new blob storage click continue Okay, so for this e classes storage, we are going to create this one. Click create. All right, so Azure Blob Storage. We have created this one. Now, what I'm going to do. So we have already a SQL data, uh, database target. These two linked services available. I don't want this source one delete. And this one also on premises also you can delete. Also yesterday we have uh, installed integration runtimes, right? I want to delete that self host integration runtime. Otherwise it will charge this one. This one. Yesterday, uh, sorry to interrupt. 
Yesterday I have installed this uh, uh, self-hosted uh, integration runtime. Okay, and in services also it's running successfully. But uh, today when I try to create that, it is throwing me an error message. Let's let's check your service integration runtime service is running in your local computer or not? Yeah, it's running. Yeah, I have verified even that one also. It's running. Send me the screenshot of that request. Okay, we'll discuss at the ending. Okay, good. So, what I'm going to do here, I have created two linked services one for storage account and the one for the SQL database. Then, simply you can go to both are in the cloud only, right? Then, this auto resolve integration runtime is enough. So, now we can go to author. So, what is the scenario over here? The scenario is I have a two containers. I want to load all the list of files, whatever available in each container so this is one container and this is another container so first you need to get all the file names available in this first compute container and the second container to get a list of file names available inside a container what is the activity you want to take get metadata activity so one get metadata activity i want to take for taking all the information from one container another get metadata activity metadata activity from another container and once we are reading this file names so we are going to load that information into we are going to pass that information into my for each loop container so because i want to loop every time one one activity copy data activity inside this for each loop container to execute for each file because uh, we need to copyright this is copy data activity this is another copy data activity i'm going to take each file name how many files we have inside this get metadata activity this for each loop container is going to loop this one for each loop and this is copy data activity this is also copy data For each loop. This is get metadata activity. This is get metadata activity. Get metadata activity. Getting some metadata information about the files available in your container. So let me take first one get metadata activity to get the information from the container EMP. Bangalore EMP container and another one for Bangalore sorry HYD EMP EMP HYD okay so let me go over here take a new pipeline Pipeline name blob to SQL. So that is the name I have given for the container. Sorry, this pipeline. Now we need to what do you need to take under the general. You have a get metadata activity to get the information from a container. What are the list of files we have? All the file names I want to return. So what is the Activity name you want to give EMP HYD metadata. Okay, so how to configure this one? You require a data set. So simply either you can create a data set over here, click on data sets, or you can click on a data sets over here as well. Click on data sets, click new over here, and uh, Azure Blob Storage, then click continue. What is the files? Delimited text files and where is the link to service Azure blob storage and what is the container? From which container you want to take this information e classes HYD container Click on that container and then click ok don't select any files Because we need all the list of files from this container Okay, click ok So this data set name Delimited text one it is coming and uh, click on this data activity 
see here from this particular data set what information you want to take click on the new so this is the information you, you can able to get over here so what information you can able to get the information related to any new child items child items means whatever the files file names available all the list of file names will be written by your get metadata activity exist whether a particular file whatever the file name you are specifying inside this delimited text see if you want to edit this data set you can go over here so what is the name you want to give i want to give it as a ds underscore emphyd so here if you are giving a file name whether that file exists or not you can use this one if you are selecting the exist whether the file what you specified in your data set available in that folder the container or not it will return a true false okay and also item name so what is your uh, whatever the item you are selecting over there what is the name of that item it will return item type means what kind of file it is it will return and so this is how some information is going to specify over here so now i'm going to take only child items okay so if you are executing this one this will give you the all the list of file names available in your emp hyd container similarly i want to take one more container take the get metadata activity emp bangalore metadata go to the data sets click on new azure blob storage delimited text file azure blob storage this i'm going to give it as a ds underscore emp bng and select the container emp hyd click ok then click ok sorry it should be bangalore right then go over here again open the data set change the path you can change the browse it here emp bangalore click ok perfect so now i want to check at this stage click on debug if you are debugging these two will be executed we'll see what are the list of file names it will getting field list in get metadata active cannot be empty so validation failed that means for this one we haven't specified what is the field list what you are trying to take here i want to take it the child items now we can debug it Right, so it is um, it is child here. items here is it uh, taking the it is taking the file names inside your containers child items means okay. inside your data set whatever the container you are specifying in that particular container what are the files available each file name for example go to mp bangalore how many files you have three files the file names will be returned so two containers uh, two activities executed one is emp bangalore metadata emp hyd metadata do you want to see the output what it has written by this emp bangalore metadata simply click on output see child items what are the child item the child items are emp bangalore emp chennai emp hyderabad so total three files it has written all right total duration three seconds and uh, what is the integration runtime it has used what is the location it has executed all those things you can able to see here 
perfect similarly you can see for emp bangalore also same files we have inside the same container on the container so total six files it has written so whatever the files we are getting i want to load each file name i want to load the each file name so first whatever the file names written by emp hyderabad metadata those file names i want to copy one by one one by one by using a for each loop container what the for each loop container will do for each loop container is going to take the input from where you can find out that one under the iterations and conditions just drag and drop this for each loop container connect over here click on this uh, for each loop container i just want to give the name of this one is for each emp hyderabad okay and this for each loop container how many times you want to loop that you need to specify under the settings items whatever the items child items written by your get metadata activity the output of your get metadata activity those many number of times those many items we are going to done. click on add dynamic content so whatever the hyd dot metadata dot output dot child items from this activity whatever the emp hyd metadata dot output dot child items okay then click on similarly take one more this for each loop container is for looping the whatever the in output is coming from your emp bangalore just connect over here for each emp bangalore go to the settings what is the items from the emp bangalore metadata activity from which activity emp bangalore metadata activity output that output is child items child items okay so this for each loop containers are going to loop but inside what do you want to do for each time whenever it is looping for example this emp get metadata activity returning three file names by taking each file name it is going to execute so each time whenever it is executing i want to execute a copy data activity inside so click on this activities if you want to add any activity inside you can click on edit or you can directly click on this configure click on this configuration so what is the activity you want to take inside copy data activity copy data activity so this copy data one hyd what is the source data set and what is the sync data set try to create it source data set i'm going to click on new blob storage delimited text file this is uh, delimited text hyd source src from which linked service this one what is the file you want to load from hyderabad take any of one file first okay then click ok and first as a headers actually open it you need to enable that option first row has a headers all right then go back then again sync data set create a new data set this for sql database 
Azure SQL database, Azure SQL table, DS. Click on this EMP table. Click OK. Now we can go to the mappings, import the schemas. So this I don't want to load insert a date. Just delete that one. Perfect. Okay. Similarly, come back. Do for this one as well. EMP for each loop container EMP Bangalore as well. Add a activity that is copy data activity. What is the source? The source container is block container, but uh, is a Bangalore. Select the files any of one file. Go to the sync. And the same data set you can use because we are going to load the same table, right? Azure SQL table DS you can use. And for this uh, data set, you need to set up first as a headers. Open the data set, whatever you created. And first to as a headers. Perfect. All right. And go to the mappings, import the scheme. So delete this one. Delete it. Okay. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do, if I'm executing this one, what will happen? First, this one and this one both will return three three files. Three CSC files, three CSC files. So this for each loop container is going to execute three times. This is going to execute three times. Correct. So when it is going to execute three times, and inside this first for each loop container, you have taken a copy data activity. It is going to copy the data three times for which file. This is going to copy the data three times inside your data set. What is the file name you have specified? You have specified EMP Bangalore. It is going to take three times the same file. To understand because we have specified this EMP Bangalore.txt. I don't want to load only this file. Whatever this for each loop container is going to repeat each file name that I want to pass dynamically to this data set. Whatever the data set we have. If you want to close this data sets, so it is asking to save, right? So once you are publishing all the content, whatever you develop, then you can close it. Otherwise, uh, if you are closing, it will uh, delete it. So first you can publishing this into Azure Data Factory service. Close this one, close this one, close this one. Okay. So here, for this particular data set, you need to pass instead of giving this emp bangalore.txt whatever the file name is coming from your for each loop container for each container is going to loop every time every time one item what is that item name i want to pass here first i want to take emp bangalore.txt emp hy.txt emp chennai.txt the file names i want to send dynamically to here how to pass dynamically a value to in the place of this add dynamic content to add dynamic content go to parameters click add what is the parameter name you want to give i want to give it as a file name string data type value so this 
parameter name i want to pass under this connection here instead of giving emp.txt add dynamic content file name data set dot file name whatever the parameter i created this parameter value i'm going to pass dynamically here what is the value of this parameter What is the value of this parameter? How to pass a value to this parameter? The value will come from your copy data activity here. See, click on this copy data activity. What is the parameter? File name. How to pass the value? Whatever the value you are going to return by your for each loop container. Click on add dynamic content and for each loop, whatever the item dot name. For each item, the name I'm going to take and passing that to a parameter, and then what is your parameter? File name. So that file name parameter is available inside your data set. So the value will come over here to your parameter. Same value will be keeping into here data set dot file name. Clear? Any questions here? Similarly, you can do for other one as well. Go to this another for each loop container. Inside this for each loop container. Go to your uh, copy data activity and go to the source data set. Open instead of here, first create one parameter that is file name. Any name you can give that you can pass dynamically. Okay, and then you can go to your here see the value you need to pass item dot name then click ok all right so i'm passing a value from my for each loop container level to my data set level so to pass a value from for each loop container to copy data activity to data set level you need to create a value in your data set level. You need to create a parameter. So for this parameter, I'm passing a value. The moment when you are creating a value to your data set, a parameter to your data set, that will be displayed here. So what information you want to pass, you can select it. Just try to debug it. Uh, Ram, I think we have created the same parameter name, right? Uh, does it take uh, duplicate? Uh parameter name also like file name file name the same line the scope is different so it will not impact okay the scope i created for a different data set you cannot use that parameter in another data set because you created a parameter in the data set level okay the scope will differ yeah see this is the execution flow first emp hyderabad Metadata executed and then EMP Bangalore executed two for each loop containers. This is one for each loop container. This is another for each loop container executed. And then copy data one. Copy data one, copy data one. So three times a copy data activity executed. Do you want to see each time what is the input it has taken?
or as you can see over here from the blob storage it has read one file loading the data into sql database so three times this is for hyd three copy data activity executed three times for hyd for each lib container because three files you have and another bangalore is uh, executed three times that copy data activity so let's see the data inside Okay, so let's connect to target. Click on query editor. Okay, so let me connect over here. Let's see, select star from EMP. Right, so this is how the data has loaded. If I'm running this one again, data will be duplicated. How to truncate data before I'm going to load into table? How to delete a data before you are going to process this one? So, how to execute a SQL statement? So, for example, inside this copy data activity, you have a statement under the sync pre copy script, like a delete from EMP. And similarly, click on this copy data activity. 
go to sync delete from em let me debug it so the activities what we have discussed here is copy data activity get metadata activity for each loop activity So get metadata activity for getting the metadata information about the files. That might be a count of files, file exist or not, file name, file type, all file names, all file names in a container, structure of the container structure of the file so that kind of information you can able to return by using a get metadata activity for each loop container is going to loop and execute the activities kept inside for each loop container is going to loop and execute the activities and kept inside the loop and execute the activities kept inside the for each loop based on the number of items output passed from based on the number of items number of items output passed from the source from the um, prior activity Okay. Let's say, for example, when I'm going to pass a files from this get metadata to this for each loop container, I want to pass only, I want to filter out only a file starting with. Uh, or uh, starts with or ends with a particular string how to filter a file not the data inside the file the files whatever we are going to return by this for each loop container so this get metadata activity and this get metadata activity whatever it is returning i want to filter so what do you want to filter let me take one filter over here so whatever the input Coming from here, I want to connect here. Click on this filter. Go to the settings. What is items? Add dynamic items. Whatever the metadata dot. Child items. And uh, the condition. So what is the condition you want to write down? 
we have several functions starts with function what do you want to start that item whatever the item written by your get metadata activity the rate item dot name starts with what starts with the EMP whatever the item it is returning that starts with EMP then I want to filter over here so invalid unrecognized expression at the rate of item item dot name okay not emp i just want to make it like a um, text file similarly i want to put one more condition over here filter activity so what are the items you want to pass this the items are whatever the output coming from your bangalore dot child items and the condition add dynamic condition starts with item dot name txt item dot name dot txt is single code mm. yeah sorry we don't have anything starts with dot txt right everything we have with the uh, emp would be so let's with uh, I will put this condition because I want to keep another folder as well, another files as well. Okay. Let me upload a few more files. Let me upload a few more files. Okay. Done. So now you can able to okay let me give this link over here but i want to execute up to this filter activities only so click on this filter and see in the table uh, on the top here debug until means it will not execute this one here also debug until so these two will not execute 
click on debug. I just want to check whether the filter is act working or not. How it is working. Oh, it is executing up to here only. Okay, let me remove this. Okay, so these four will be executed. See here, this first metadata activity returning all these files batch 46, batch 47, EMP Bangalore, EMP HYD, EMP Chennai, EMP Bangalore. But your filter activity, this one is going to return. Click over here. It has filtered out of five files, only three files. What are those files? Whatever the files starting with EMP dot Bangalore, EMP dot EMP Chennai, and EMP HYD. Similarly, the other filter also. They has filtered out of six files, only three files starting with EMP. So this is how we can able to put a filter condition to restrict the files over here. Then what about this for each loop container? Here actually you have taken the items dot output, right? But uh, we want to filter out the data. So whatever this filter activity is giving that output you need to take. Filter dot output. Is it output? What exactly we are expecting from this filter activity? We are expecting some file names. So how the file names are returning over here? So let us see the output here. Filtered item count three. Value name, right? So you need these values. So how to take this value name says you can pass over here instead of this get minute activity whatever the filter activity is returning filter one dot output dot value dot name let's see click ok and similarly for this one also go to settings dot value dot name okay then click let's see how it is going to behave now So Ram, in one filter, can we add multiple conditions? Multiple conditions and our condition you can put here. Okay. By using this uh, functions, whatever the different kind of functions are available. Mm -hmm. Logical and it got failed. What might be the reason? The reason is whatever the input you have given let's see the error message length activity filter output value attempt cannot be evaluated because property name cannot be selected okay then remove the value name over here just put up to value only. here also because we need to pass for your for each loop container it's a array array means whatever the output is coming from your filter what is the output you want to take the output value so value contains all these names inside value you want to take a name okay let me debug item dot name
right so it has executed successfully so this is how you can use the scenarios filter activity filtering the input based on the condition and returns the output to next activity the language what we are using inside this azure data factory it's it's not specific language it is just expressions functions related to your azure data factory it is it is not something like sql something like a dax Tom. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Like uh, no, yeah, you are uh, no, no uh, deleting the data uh, before executing the package, right? Like uh, no, that is uh, no, defined inside a for each loop container level. That means copy data level. But when uh, Hyderabad executed, it is loaded. When again Bangalore executing, it will uh, delete all the data, right? Whatever existing, whichever loaded in the Hyderabad level. It is also deleted right? when it is executing. This is going to delete the data. What it is loading this one, and when it is executing, this is deleting the data. What already loaded. That is a contradiction. Yeah, that is. Yeah, you should yeah, not yeah. use so delete function inside for each loop container. You have to do that prior here. Yeah, correct. You can do over here or here level, or you can do over here or here. Better you can start mm -hmm. over here. But what is the activity mm -hmm. we can use to delete a data inside a SQL table? Either we can use a lookup activity or a stored procedure. Activity. Those we will discuss tomorrow. Lookup activity or a stored procedure activity. Any of one you can use to execute your SQL statements. Okay, guys, let's meet tomorrow. We'll continue about different topics.